In the distant future, the world is an unrecognizable place. Scarred by eons of war and unchecked environmental destruction, the planet's surface is dominated by barely habitable wastelands. Tyrannical corporations lord over the vast majority of the human race, living under their oppressive rule in domed cities called Arcologies. Outside of the Arcologies, collectivist communities of wastelanders seek freedom from the corpse by living nomadically in slow-moving behemoths called crawlers. Each crawler is home to a few hundred or thousand people, called a union. It isn't a safe way of living, but for many the freedom is worth the risk. Every member of the union contributes to their survival, but each union has only a handful of people with the skill and training to operate mechs. The scrap these pilots gather from the ruins of civilization is the lifeblood of the collective. The wastelands are made more dangerous by roving bands of raiders, corporate operatives, radiation storms, and unnatural monstrosities. Our story begins with a humble union known as the Crows, aboard their trusty old crawler, the Nest. Along the laborious journey of the Crows, one hope keeps them going. Starfall City, the lost jewel of mankind. A city with as much food and comfort as ten corporate arcologies, but free from their oppression. While some dismiss Starfall as a myth, many cling to the hope that its hidden entrance will be under the next piece of scrap metal that they dig out of the dust. Uh, hello, everyone, and welcome to Season 5 of Roll for Distraction. My name is Alex Vigna, and I will be the GM for this season, which will be a campaign of Salvage Union. Salvage Union is a low-to-medium crunch mecha system published by Leyline Press. Let me just get through some housekeeping stuff before we get started. I promise our normal episode intros aren't this long. It's just the way of things when we start a new season. Uh, full disclosure, Leyline Press did reach out to us and sent us the rulebook and asked us to play the game. We didn't find it organically, but we genuinely liked the look of it, and we know our audience likes big robots. Big so we agreed robots! To play. Thank you guys for sending it to us. Uh, the campaign isn't sponsored, per se. They aren't paying us. We just didn't have to pay for the rule book, and they're helping us out with some art assets and that sort of thing. Just want to say that for transparency's sake, and again, big thanks to the folks at Leyline for reaching out and sharing this with us. If there's any other RPG publishers out there listening, don't hesitate to do the same. If you've been with us before, welcome back. Strap in for another adventure. If you're new here, welcome. Thanks for popping in. This is a show where each season of about 10 episodes or so, we play a TTRPG that none of us have played before. So, fair warning, this is our first game of Salvage Union. Please bear with us as we learn the game. Get ready for a bunch of distractions, as the show's name implies. Uh, also, if you're familiar with Salvage Union already, then you'll notice that our game is beginning at tech level 2 instead of level 1 just to get the ball rolling to really see what the system has to offer. Uh, likewise, as we do with all of our games, there might be some house rules and reinterpretations of things going on. We might put more or less emphasis on certain aspects of the game to tell a good story and make a good show. So our experience might be a little different than yours. That's just showbiz. So we are uh, less than 100 subscribers away from hitting the 2000 mark. So just want to say an extra thank you to all of you for continuing to support whether you have come from Lancer, Monster of the Week, or even from our OG Dungeons and Dragons season one. Thank you for sticking with us and watching us learn and grow and staying for this chaotic, uh, chaotic, chaotic stream of consciousness. <laughs> yeah, chaotic chaos. Thank you. Um, yes, uh, which brings me to the next point in my little script here. Make sure you're subscribed and following so you can catch future episodes of this show our live streams here on YouTube, and updates on the system I'm working on, Big Adventure Game, which is currently in a free public beta. Link in the description for that. If you're feeling crazy, consider becoming a YouTube member. It's the best way to support us. And you also get access to new episodes 24 hours early, both in video and audio podcast form. Hit the join button below the video to learn more. If you're listening on a podcast app, no worries. YouTube does have an audio-only podcast feature built in, but we appreciate you listening wherever you are and however you like. We have previously played Cyberpunk Red, Lancer, and Monster of the Week, and you can find all of those episodes on the same YouTube channel or podcast account that you're already listening to. And if you're listening from the distant future, 
then be sure to also check out whatever of the next game we're playing is. We don't even know as I'm saying this. Lastly, we have a community Discord server where you can get announcements about new videos, chat about the show, look for other players for your own TTRPG campaigns. Link for that in the description as well. Okay, that's everything. Um, Good job. <laughs> also, don't forget the rules. Take your vitamins. <laughs> I thought you, you paused for so long. I thought you were going to say, also, don't forget. And then I forgot. I uh, forgot. <laughs> <laughs> as I said in my little bit of dramatic narration at the beginning, we find ourselves in the very distant future in the region of the world known as the Arid Steppes, with an E in there. Uh, chugging along the landscape is the Nest, essentially a small town on a bunch of slow walker legs, a big lumbering machine with like 1,500 people living on it. It's midday, and most of the crawler's denizens are hiding from the blazing sun inside the crawler's cantina at this time. Uh, so we'll, we'll, we'll pick up the scene here, and you guys can introduce yourselves in a moment. As part of the way this game works, the uh, players get to name some of the important crew members. So first we're going to meet uh, Manny, who is the head chef, and in here also at the moment is Gray, the uh, crawler's head doctor. Um, <laughs> yeah, definitely. This is what happens when you let people name things. They, they, oh, Dr. Gray. Yeah, great. <laughs> Great. Sorry, I'm a Grey's Anatomy nerd. This is where this I, I leads five us. I watched seasons of that show, so I, I know a little bit too. <laughs> um, so, uh, the two of them are arguing. Uh, Grey is going up to the counter with his tray of food. <laughs> we named someone Big Smoke. <laughs> I forgot Yeah, we got that. Iceman. <laughs> uh, I guess we'll meet him soon. You, you name these people. Listen, we'll get there when we get there. Yeah. Um, anyway, so uh, Gray walks up to the counter with his, his tray of food. And he's like, so, uh, Gray, I don't think I've ever asked you this. Do you think Starfall is real or do you think these people are just crazy? And, and Gray's like, oh, I mean, come on, really? Like, big mythical city, land of milk and honey? Come on. Like, no. That, it, it's impossible, right? Like, come on. And Manny leans over to the table nearest to him which has U5 sitting at it and he's like hey pilots what about you guys weigh in on this as we do that this, this is how we'll, we'll intro you guys um, yay I'm just gonna roll dice uh, okay well hey Colin since you were out last season you get to go first um, uh, you're sitting closest Mandy looks over to you just so introduce yourself say hi I'm Colin and then um, describe your character and, and say something back to Mandy Hi, I'm Colin. I'm back. They thought You're they back. could get rid of me, but I'm here. Nah, we missed you. Uh, no, we didn't. We're legally obligated <laughs> to say that. Uh. <laughs> so, uh, s sitting at the table, uh, kind of leaning back very precariously in their chair, just kind of staring at a Steam Deck, playing some sort of game. Possibly Helldivers 2. Who knows? How? I don't think, I don't think that would work. <laughs> Hey, you know what, man? I'm sure someone's running some sort of bootleg server. Anyway, keep going. Is a uh, young, youngish, probably early twenties, male, brown hair, kind of like a almost le leather black jacket, uh, some ripped jeans. Almost and, leather. Uh, almost it's the leather. future. There's all the animals. Yeah, that there's leather. there's not real leather here. Just kind of has his head buried in the uh, Steam Deck. He's pretty immersed in the game. Not really paying attention. So you, you don't say anything back to Manny? <laughs> nope. I, I am I am in the zone. All right. Ba, 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 ba. Rolling more dice for whoever goes next. Uh, uh, Gerard. Hello, it's me, <laughs> Gerard. Back again. Uh, my character's name is Giuseppe. He's a middle-aged <laughs> Italian man. And, uh, he's just or whatever to... <laughs> Italy is in this distant future. <laughs> he's just here to kick ass and eat some gabagool, and he's all out of gabagool. That is all he has written for. That is story. all I wrote. <laughs> I wrote that today, the day we were recording. Hey. I know. Hey, it's G, award, what do you Academy look like? Uh, probably like grizzled Mario. He's got a hat. It's it probably was red, but now it's kind of like dirt brown. Gerard, do you do you say anything to Manny when he asks if you believe in Starfall City? Oh, uh, it's Starfall City. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> what? 
Okay. Great play. Next person uh, would be Alex. Cool. The other Alex, not me. That one. Go. <laughs> uh, hey, guys. Um, I'm playing as Twitch uh, this time around. She is an engineer. Uh, she also has a background as an entertainer. Uh, she has her mech Calcifer. It used to be her we'll mom's We'll go over the mech. mechs later when we actually get to Oh, yeah. I was just... I was, it was part of the backstory. Uh, it used to be her mom's mech, and she inherited it, and she wanted to make a lot of upgrades on it. So she left the nest for a while to be a DJ at a Corpo nightclub to make the good monies. She hated every minute of it, but she got the monies, was able to get the upgrades she want, and escaped back and was able to kind of come back to her old life. And my call sign came from a long, long lost computer website where people once said that programmers would thrive and enjoy video games. How mysterious. I know. Oh wait. I, I, I didn't purple. say I didn't say what my call sign is. My call sign's Damon. Did you not say that at all? Okay. <laughs> all right. Nope. Well, nope. That's who you are. Um, uh, Brian. Howdy. Name is Maverick. You can call me Mac. I'm a scout and a survivor. I've always been on my own, and life's been hard. <laughs> but a struggle just to get by, and in getting by, I became a pilot. And now I'm looking for ways to get my anger out. But not always in a constructive manner. I like to imagine you saying this to Manny in regards oh. to his question. <laughs> oh. He's like, yeah, yeah, I've known you for years, man. <laughs> I just, I just realized I didn't say what I thought about Starfall. Oh City. yeah, what do you think? Um, I'd like to believe it's real. I, I'm not sure if I do, but I want to. All right, and uh, are are you, are you Mav or Mac? Because you know, I I don't remember putting Mav in he in here. Go by Rick. It's it's the first <laughs> syllable. <laughs> Morty, I, I, I don't think Mac, I put Mav because I've I've been trying to go by Mac, so I'm going by Mac. D- Damon just looks up from his Steam Deck while Mav is a uh, monologuing. Mac, you literally babysat me when I was growing up. What do you mean you've been on your own your entire <laughs> life? I don't ask questions. Do you believe in Starfall City? TBD. <laughs> I'm scouting. <laughs> I'm still looking. Uh, I haven't laid my eyes on it yet. <laughs> uh, and last person, process of elimination. Uh, John, you can introduce yourself. Hi, my name's John. Uh, my call sign is Dredge. I am a salvager with the trader background. Uh, my motto is, what doesn't kill you almost kills you. And my appearance is a mix of a 17th century naval captain with like 80s and 90s activewear patterns. Just really a God awful thing to look at. Like, that's cursed. It is. Yeah. Anyway, I'm a man of faith. I think Starfall is as real as it needs to be to keep as many people going as possible. If we find it, great. If hope keeps this this uh, Walker looking for it, even better. Better than dying out in the wastes. So uh, the Doctor Gray looks over at you guys, uh, and they're like, "See, I mean, they don't sound too convinced." And Manny's like, "No, no, I mean." Come on, like, we believed in this thing for years, like, you can't just make that up, like, you know, like, uh, so the point being that, uh, the crawler is, is quite divided on, uh, whether or not this thing is real. Um. Like the Fremen. Kinda? It is The ones that are like, yeah, sure, whatever, and then the ones that are like, God, he's here, he made it! (laughs) The the Stilgars and the Chani's of the world. Yeah. Um. What'd you just call? <laughs> you gotta watch the movie. Is Starfall no, um, Nissan Al Gaib? More than eleven. Nissan Al Gaib. Uh, <laughs> so you guys are sitting there. Um, desert Jesus. Having your your lunch. Jesus uh, was Desert be- Jesus. <laughs> I, I mean, anyway, you guys are all sitting there enjoying your 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 slop, um, your mediocre. Uh, uh, rations are on you your calling, big Are you calling mech. Manny's cooking mediocre? Wow. Really? Talking shit about Manny on the first episode. Man. I can't believe just, it. Yeah, what the fuck? Why do you not like our chef? How, how inconsiderate. <laughs> I mean, at least Manny. he's got like a, a real name. Um, <laughs> what, do <you> mean? <laughs> what are you talking about? These are all real names. Manny kind of gives me the vibes of Cookie from Atlantis. 
Oh God, what is it? Uh, he's like, I Be- got your the four base- food groups: beans, yeah. bacon, beans, bacon, beer, bacon, and whiskey lard. and lard. Whiskey and lard. <laughs> oh, whiskey and lard. Right. I was trying yeah, to stick yeah, with th- Those are the four, four food groups in in the wastes. Um, um, as you guys are sitting here uh, about finishing up your meal, uh, you hear very very briefly uh, an alarm, like just like <laughs> just two. <laughs> Um, not, not an ongoing thing, just just two. And then it's followed by, you hear the voice of the ship's captain, who just goes by Commodore. So you 64. say. Um, <laughs> uh, you, you hear them say o- o- over the over the mic, This is a yellow alert. Crew, be prepared. Pilots, get to your mechs. We've got debris falling from orbit due to impact five clicks north. Ten minutes from impact. Go dig up some good stuff. So what is the color scale? Where's yellow on the color scale? Uh, yellow is just like, oh, something might be happening. Anyway, yes, uh, so the Commodore has ordered you to your mechs. Uh, they say that there is debris, some sort of satellite or something, piece of a space station, falling a few clicks north, um, landing in a few minutes. So by the time you guys suit up, um, it should have impacted. Junk. Worth noting that the crawler moves at, like, one mile an hour, so you can go there and back. I knew and we should have gotten have the toy moved. So, you guys go down to the mech bay, weave your way through the hallways of the crawler, uh, and arrive at essentially a small hangar room where all your mechs are in a line. Um, and I'm going to ask you guys to just go down the line um, and describe your mech, say what its model is, what its name is, vaguely what it looks like, um, and, and what sort of uh, core ability it has that makes it special. Brian, you want to go first? Yes. So, my mech is fly in the wall. Say hello, everybody. Uh, it's very Hi, fast. Bye. Hello, everybody. Buzz, buzz, motherfucker. <laughs> it's very fast. It's inexplicably always sticky. I don't know why. Uh, and it's always overgrown with plants and vines. And it is a Hussar mech. Uh, who would like to go next? I can go next. All right, so I have my mech, Kelsifer. He is a forge mech, and he's got a giant frickin' printer on him, and it can print 3D metallic structures, which is super cool. There are way, 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 way too many buttons in the cockpit, but I have somehow managed to memorize what every single one of them does, and I find that very impressive. Who's next? Uh, Colin. Hello, it's me. Uh, so my mech is Faraday. It is a mirror ball which is a bipedal mech with four arms and uh, with discs at the end of them. What do you mean, quadrupedal? It stands up. It walks. And then it has four arms. It's bipedal. That's how anatomy works. Yeah, but the picture has four, but alright. No, it doesn't. Yeah, it does. Those, those no. kind of those look like four, four legs. That's four. The, third, One, the fourth one's like well, behind it, but. Oh. Okay, I guess I'm wrong. I, yes. I will uh, go fuck myself. Anyway, it has uh, four discs on it that allows it to project a Faraday cage um, that can be utilized to disrupt incoming organs. Uh, it is black with lots of uh, glowing RGB. It's a gamer mech. Uh, yes. Gerard. Uh, okay. Uh, hello. My mech's name is the Ham Calzone. Uh, it is a magpie mech. It makes, uh, pew-pew sounds when it's used. It is covered in camo. It's it's ca- covered in camo, and it has a decal of a ha- Ham Calzone on the side. And its special ability is hot swap universal mounts. It can switch weapons good, is what I gleaned from this paragraph. Uh, John. Uh, my mech is a gopher pattern. I'm sorry, gopher chassis. I dubbed it the honey badger pattern because I really kitted it out in armor and weapons. Its chassis ability is that it has an integrated expanded transport hold. I have a bigger backpack. I can carry more stuff. Its quirk is a rudimentary AI personality, so that's helpful sometimes, and sometimes it's a huge hindrance. Uh, its appearance is that it is a little old and beat up, but it is still very solidly built despite its scratches and dents. Oh, okay. So yes, those are our mechs. We've got uh, a Forge, a Hussar, a Mirror Ball, a Magpie, and a Gopher. You guys suit up, as it were, although these are big, heavy things, so it's more like you just get into a car. Um, so, question, when do we get the Iron yeah. Worm? 
what? <laughs> it's one of the really oh, fucking prob big... Probably never. <laughs> it looks like um, the drill from Avatar tr that tried to get into Ba Sing Se. <laughs> yes. Um, probably never, because uh, the tech level six. Anyway, you guys get into your mechs that you actually have that you can afford because they're tech level two, and the side of the crawler opens up, a big dramatic moment as, you know, the dark side of this wall has this big sliver of bright light that almost blinds you as it comes open, and you're looking out onto the barren uh, desert, um, or rocky, craggy area, hey, desert adjacent. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the, the the dune music plays in the distance, um, and as you're looking out uh, of the hangar, you see on the horizon uh, a red and orange streak just slam into the ground just past the horizon. There's sort of a ridge in front of you, Jesus. Um, and it lands just over, and there's some dust that gets blown up into the air. There's a mushroom um, and cloud. that's that's the satellite. That's the satellite you were looking for. Um, that fell down. Doesn't doesn't look like it was particularly huge. Um, hard to say, you know, fire around it, but. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's there's no like it's like a shockwave reaches you or anything. It was probably pretty small. So yeah, you can walk that way. Um, there's no need to roll or anything. Um, you lumber along. <laughs> <laughs> um, and any banter as you uh. Pilot your mechs across. So, what's the over under on something being useful here? Well, I'll give it like a 50. 50. I'm gonna say a solid 42. Meaning life. Uh, I mean, worse comes to worse. There'll be at least some metal we can probably slap onto the nest. Alexander, how often do things fall out of the sky like this? Uh, like, is there any reason we should be wary? Pretty rarely. Um, it's happened, if you've seen it before, but it's it's like a yearly, maybe bi-yearly event um, that it happens like within reasonable range of you to do anything about it anyway. How long, how many years have we been doing this? I've been doing this for 30 years. How, how long have you been doing it? Uh, very, varying times, each of you. Um, but all of you probably at least at least five years, I'd say. If, if this happens on a fairly predictable schedule... Uh, no, I didn't uh, say that. <laughs> I just said it happens said... roughly once a year. <laughs> it's on every second Tuesday of the month. <laughs> right. Yeah, no. It's, it's, it happens at random times, but Cause we're about Because we're also in random places. We don't normally... Also camp. in random places. Sometimes it'll fall so far away from you that you just say, ah, fuck it. You don't really count that one, right? Um, That's a mulligan. But it's, it's a known thing. There, there was sort of an age of space exploration and such, but um, everything got all fucked up. When the fire And now... Attacked. No one's maintaining the satellites and such, so little bits fall down from time to time. Got it. Not on so, Earth. So it's not like uh, the Earth passes through, like, a space graveyard no, this is just, somewhere. No, this is just a thing that happens. Got it. So there's no reason. I was going to say, like, I was going to be, like, weary of going over to it and, you know, hey, why did this thing fall? I think there's a reason why it fell out of the sky. But if no, it happens yeah. about satellites once a year, that have been up for an extended period of time will experience a decaying orbit, and if they are hardy enough, will survive to impact the surface of the Earth. Thank Very much you, so. thank you for the useful. Information. Well, now that we've applied science to it, I quit. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is too hard. And um, I don't does anyone like have people. any kind of like scanners or anything on their mechs? Uh, the answer might be no. I, I have know. a. Metal oh, detector. I have an escape hatch. <laughs> metal detector. Okay. Oh, I have a deep survey scanner. I have a self-destruct. <laughs> <laughs> I also have a survey scanner. I thought you were going to say, I also have a self-destruct. <laughs> <laughs> What's this one do? So, when activated, a survey scanner allows you to scan a specific point of interest within range. This can be a single point on the region map or a specific feature in the world, such as a ruin, unique area of terrain, settlement, or base. If a point is not worth scanning before it hold, uh, because it holds nothing of interest to you, uh, or you have all of the relevant information on it, the mediator must tell you before you make your scan. Um, and then... Um, yeah, so so the range is long, so you guys can walk, I, I said it's landing about five kilometers north of you. Um, so you can walk, you know, a, third, a half the way there, maybe three quarters of the way there. 
And so what long range means is it's like halfway to the horizon, right? Um, so Alex, if you want to use your uh, scanner, we can do that. That'll work. Yes. Uh, you have to roll a d20. There's a chart there. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at it. And you go ahead and let me know what you get. All right, I did, and it was a six. So I have messy results, and I can ask you two questions. One of the answers must be true, but the other answers uh, contains false information as decided what by the mediator. Okay. speaks truth, the other lies. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, so also that that action costs you two energy points. This is two EP on Survey Scanner. So on your mech sheet, your energy points was just near the top somewhere. It's like two stamina, yeah, two battery power, whatever. The other thing is when you get a low roll, you have the option to push in your mech, which means you gain a little bit of heat and you re-roll the die. Up to you if you feel like doing that. You I am okay for right now. There's only so much heat, yeah. Um, so, uh, ask me two questions about the area. I assume the area you mean roughly a click north just over this ridge. Yes. What are are there any dangers radaring? that we need to know about? Uh, you believe a, a very strong possibility, yes, because you are detecting movement. You're detecting three objects moving. Okay. Can I detect what these three objects are made out of? Are they mech, animal, like some weird bug? Uh, your scan is picking up that they are uh, metal. Okay. Well, one of those things has to be a lie, so <laughs> shit. <laughs> Either they're moving or they're metal. Okay. So you share that with the group? How do you guys uh, proceed with caution? Definitely. All right. Uh, I also have, because of the metal detector, I can roll the d20, and on a 20, I get a piece of scrap relative to the level of the area. Yeah, where I again, can... it, when you're when you're actually over there. Right now, you're just surrounded by okay. rocks. Um, not, not literally anywhere in a specific scrappable area. Um, so, yeah, you guys can uh, push forward a little bit, going slower, maybe running on lower power to uh, reduce your own detectability. And you climb up a short ridge. It's maybe, you know, a 50-foot elevation difference on some rocks in the desert, which, relative to your mechs, is not that tall. Um, and as you come over, you see uh, the crash site. It's this small crater in the middle of the desert. It looks kind of like where Thor's hammer came down in the first Thor movie, probably about uh. that size. Maybe, you know, 60, 70 feet across. And a lump of... Uh, hot metal in the middle of it and a few small little bits uh, scattered around. Also in the crater are raiders, wastelanders, uh, bad dudes. They have brought with them uh, two trucks, you know, Humvees, warthogs from Halo, with like machine guns mounted on the back of them. Got it. And, and a tank. Oh no. Just like a, just like a straight up tank. You're right, turn around. <laughs> you do outnumber them. The tank, the main gun of the tank is pretty strong, but you do outnumber 30 them. 30 millimeter autocannon says bonjour. Um, so yes, how, they, bonjour, they, you, you've got a, at least a few moments before they notice you. You're still at the edge of that like long range, but with one turn of movement, you can be in medium. How do you want to approach this? Head on. Loud and proud. Uh, are, are we within medium range? Uh, you could be very quickly. Okay, so I mean, do we want to like close rain hell on the tank and then pick off the jeeps? Fine. That sure. that sounds like like a valid plan. All right, so you want to focus the tank first, and then. So the way initiative works in this, uh, one of you is gonna roll a d20. We can just take turns with this as we go throughout the game, and yeah, you'll see it there on the on the cheat sheet in the bottom left corner of the cheat sheet. Basically, however high you roll, you determines how the match starts. Otherwise, we just go back and forth. One of you goes, one of me goes. One of you goes, one of me goes. And if there's an uneven number like there is right now, once I run out of dudes, the rest of you go. You would take turns three and three, and then the remaining two of you would go. And then we'd start over from the top. So who would like to roll the initiative? Me. No pressure. I was gonna Brian? say, now I'm scared. I don't know what I'm doing. Brian, Brian go ahead, give me, give me a it. d20. I rolled a 12. Not bad. Uh, That's a quick so draw. one pilot chosen by the players acts first. Play then passes back and forth. So yeah, you guys get the first shot. One of you can um, 
move and attack as you like. Who has the biggest, meanest gun? Not me. I have a I have 50 a... caliber machine gun. I have a 30 and millimeter a flame auto cannon. Okay, I, also I have the have same as Colin. Okay, so three of us have 30 millimeter auto cannons. I have a sand blaster. Okay, well that'll be great have... for for skinning infantry. I also have a grappling harpoon, if that matters. What are you, me from the last robot game we played? With chainsaw arms. I could use the grappling harpoon to pull someone in and get them with the chainsaw arms. Should we, uh... Can I blast him with my sand? (laughs) Alright, one of you is going. And you have to agree. (laughs) I I meant when he pulls them in, can I blast them with my sand? Maybe later. Brian, go. Are we going to have a um, uh, a map of our fight, or are we just going to talk through it no, like in Monster? We're just going to talk through it. It's 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 a gotcha. big circle crater. You're just outside the crater. They're all in the crater. Good. We have okay. a high. Not exactly shoot anyone from anywhere. Gotcha. DM, I have a question. Yeah. Just just before uh, we do this, um, so with my integrated advanced shield dome, would we be able to shoot out of it? I don't know. Does it say you can? Um, it doesn't say we can't. <laughs> um, I think I think you can shoot out of that. Yes. Coolio. Anyway, who is acting first? It's it, it sounds like John really wants to shoot his thirty millimeter cannon. One of or, the three people that has it should shoot the auto cannon first, so we get some. Explosives. Tell you what, Brian and made the go. initiative roll, so. Brian, go for it. You're a sniper. Snipe. Okay, I am a sniper. I'm gonna snipey. I'm gonna snipe the sniper. Sniper, no sniper. Uh, so, no sniping. <laughs> so I just tell you which one I want to hit. So uh, tell me. Yeah, two two trucks, one tank. Is my thirty millimeter auto cannon gonna get through the tank? Do much uh, yeah, anything the tank? can hit anything. It just does not quite as much damage necessarily. All uh, it's, right. a, it's a pretty big bullet. <laughs> um, All right, great. What's what's the range on the auto cannon? Uh, medium. Okay, so yeah, you uh, power up your mech. You run forward with your very speedy mech that you have, get into medium range and fire a shot, a couple of shots out of your auto cannon. Give me a d20 roll. 12, and then what do I add to this? Hold on. Uh, it's just 12, oh, um, okay. which is a, a success. So the way that, uh, if you guys want to know how your attacks work, it's the core resolution thing, which is on the cheat sheet. That's like the first thing there. That's just how basically every roll is going to be resolved. Um, so... Uh, on a result of 11 to 19, as you just got, that's a success. You got a normal, non-critical hit. Um, you deal the standard damage of the 30 millimeter auto cannon, which is how much, Brian? It is 4 SP. Okay, that is a hefty hit to the tank. Uh, you uh, scrape some of its armor off. It's smoking. It, it is a mean hit. Um, Remind me what SP stands for. Structure points. It structure it's it's, it's okay. HP for, yeah. It's, it's, H- it's HP for machines. Gotcha. HP Mech for health. things made of metal. Um, gotcha. Okay. Thank you. So Brian has taken a turn, which means now one of my NPCs gets a turn. I'm gonna say the tank goes now, and the tank is gonna try to shoot at uh, a fly on the wall at Mac, who who just shot at him. I roll dodge. So, uh, no, I <laughs> I roll hit. <laughs> um, <laughs> or, well, I roll a d20 and maybe I hit. Wow. Oh, one. Hilarious. First roll of the game for the GM is a one. Yeah. Yes. yes! Cascading I failure. The tank explodes. <laughs> Love it. Um, <laughs> I suffer a severe consequence when attacking. You miss the target and suffer a setback. Um, yeah, the tank uh, jams. <laughs> oh, that's a bad. Yeah. That's a bad thing to jam. That's too you know, bad. I must have shot it like right down the barrel or something and just totally messed yep. up its... You Robin Hooded that bitch. So it tries you, to fire. You fired and, a Red uh, Bull can into it. it the, the whole tank doesn't explode, but the gun is disabled. Woo! That's um, my favorite. You're welcome. Uh, and then now another one of you gets to go. It's back to uh, player turn. Want me to you know what? I'll go with, again. That was fun. Want, want me to pin oh. it with the grapple well. harpoon and start pulling it towards us? Um, I. I was gonna say, do we want? What's the range do of the we want harpoon? me to go so I can deploy my shield? Yeah, you know, Colin deploying the shield is not a bad idea. But, I mean, their their primary offensive thing is now down, so that's good. Um, cool. So I will expend... Uh, let me see how much energy I have. It's a variable SP, or energy point cost. 
I How will expend you? 10 energy points. That's a lot, but okay. I do. I don't know how much damage things do, so I'm. I'm a. Uh, for the first fight, I'm how playing very defensively. How much energy points do you have? Out of curiosity. Fourteen. Okay, I uh, mean that's a good amount. But go ahead. Uh, yeah, you you project a bubble shield, and uh, it's large enough that it covers everyone other than Mac right now. Cool. So one of the cars is gonna go now, and it's gonna drive up closer to you guys and uh, rev up its machine gun and fire at your bubble. Or it's gonna target one of you, but it's gonna hit the bubble. Um, I, I hear the sound well, of a warthog chain gun in my head. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just know what it sounds like. Okay, that's a 13, so it deals damage to the bubble. Colin, the bubble takes four damage. Four damage. The bubble has 26. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it tends a lot. <laughs> yep, I, I get three damage mitigation for and every energy. And so that's I spend. back to you players now, Alex, Gerard, or John. Uh, may I auto cannon the jeep that is not gone yet? Uh, sure. You would have to move forward from the bubble to do that. I will move. You can hit the one that has gone if you wanted. Uh, I'll hit the one that has gone then. I don't want to leave. Okay, and you can stay in the bubble to do that. So yeah. go ahead and roll your d20. Roll it. That is a thirteen. That's a normal hit. Ping! Four. Four SP. Uh, four damage to car number one. Uh, that actually is how much armor they have. Or how much nice. SP they have. It's just a car. <laughs> I um, hit its hydrogen fuel cell and it went kablooey. Yes, you rack your 30mm, fire it, hit it right in the grill, and it flips and explodes and uh, the crew goes with it. The other car goes, it does not rotate toward you guys, it's going to fire at Mac, who is closer and not protected by a bubble shield. Um, that is an 11, which I think just hits. Yep, that just hits. Um, so, Brian, you take 4 damage. 4 SP. Okay. To my mech. To your mech, yes. Your pilot is unharmed. Uh, Alex and Gerard, you both get to go, because all of my guys have gone, so go ahead, whoever wants to go first. Uh, is, there's so a wait, tank that's constipated and a jeep that's close by. Close yes. by, you Can say? Can I sandblast uh, no, the, 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 the far. There's only the far away jeep. Uh, oh, I blew up the John, close John, one. you killed the close I'm one. I'm sorry, yeah. I'm confused. Uh, can I shoot my 50 cal machine gun at the men on the normal jeep? What is the range on the 50 cal? Close. Never mind. Okay. And you what can about, move. Start moving toward them. But what if I use the grappling harpoon on the other jeep to bring it closer to us? Because that's got a medium range. Sure. So you can move out of the bubble into medium range, and then fire the grapple harpoon to pull the jeep also into medium range medium for everybody at that point. Does that just happen? So I go pew? Uh, no, like anything else, you roll a d20. Um, to see if you can hit it. So roll a d20 to hit it. Hiya. That's a 13. Uh, oh. normal success. So I take that one SP, you fire your harpoon, hooks into the side of this thing's, uh, body, and you, uh, a winch on your mech starts cranking, and it, it's, you know, it's revving its engine, its wheels are turning in the dust, but it, it reverses nonetheless t t towards you. Um, and so now it's quite close to you. Um, and then, Alex, your turn. Um, my sand blaster is also close range, so I'm gonna scoot uh, up by him. You can move so out of the bubble <laughs> next God. to you. Yes. This is an awful way to die. <laughs> <laughs> so that was my plan. Sand. Yep, scoot up out of the bubble and wait for, the, for it to come close enough. It is It is now, yeah. Okay, it is now, because it's in close range. You said it was coming to medium. Yeah, well, so Gerard pulled it. Okay, cool. It, it, so. He moved up one, he pulled them back one. So now, and then you also moved up one, so you're all, all right. together now. So let's see. Shit. Three. Okay, that's a definitely failure. a miss. Hang on. Uh, you failed at what you're attempting to do. You face a setback of the meteor's choice. When, when attacking, you miss the target. Yeah, you just you just whiff. Um, you spray some sand uh, uselessly on, on their wheel. Um, and Damn they don't really care. Um, so that's everybody. So we go back to the top now. I uncheck all these boxes on my spreadsheet. And now any one of... Uh, yeah, any one of you may go, because it's a fresh round and you guys start. So. Can I try and hit it again? 
Uh, wait, hold on. Can I move up to a position where I'm mid, close to medium range so that I can get the entire group? You want to move up so that you contain the group again? Um, yes. Sure, yeah. Uh, do then, you want to... Uh, you, can also have, you can also shoot. Yeah, I'll shoot. Okay, so you, you walk up, your bubble uh, passes over your friendly mechs, and uh, it is now... The, the line between um, Ham Calzone and the truck that it is towing <laughs> is now intersected with the bubble shield, and you can shoot through the bubble shield at it. Yep, I'm going to shoot the truck uh, 13. Uh, that is a hit. How much damage does your gun do? Uh, it is the auto cannon. What did you say? Four? Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, I think a 30 millimeters for four damage, um, which is enough damage to kill it. So, yes, you you walk up, you blow it up, the harpoon stuck in it very quickly whips back up and has just a bumper attached to it. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) And, uh, yeah, that's Damon's turn. Then uh, the only remaining NPC is the tank. It's going to attempt to run away, but, you know, it's a tank. tank. So he's going kind of slow. Back to you guys. Do you let the tank run away? Harpoon the tank! No survivors. Yes. Uh, you <laughs> You'd like to harpoon the tank, Giuseppe? Is that what I'm hearing? Harpoon yeah, be, him. It would be funny. All right, go ahead and roll. Uh. You see, you see why I played a Blackbeard and Lancer. It's fun, right? It's fun harpooning things. <laughs> roll. That's an eleven. He's been pooned. Been pooned. Um, and he takes or one damage. Or he's been harped. I mean, I, that works. We're too. winching. Nah, is we're better. winching him closer to us. I'm bringing him in range. Um, then uh, another person can go, other than Colin. I can't, I was gonna say, I can't kill it, but I do kind of want to shoot it with my sand gun. I mean, technically, I can kill it. But, uh, but go ahead, Brian, since you haven't gone since the first turn. i be like, all right, time to finish you off. As I roll exactly a d20. <laughs> a natural 20? Uh, yeah, I don't mean, 20. We, you know. We can talk about what happens there. Um, uh, when dealing damage, you can choose to double it or pick another appropriate bonus effect. Kind of irrelevant here because this thing has one SP left. Um, <laughs> but just just for future knowledge. <laughs> yeah, wait. What did uh, it say yeah. again? Uh, so a crit, you can either choose to double your damage or do something else. You can push it or disable a part of it or whatever you want to do, right? Um, yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, but in this case, because it only has one SP, it doesn't matter because even the normal damage is enough to blow the tank to smithereens. And here we are. You guys are now safe and alone in this crater. Uh, nothing on scanners. I think the coast is clear, guys. Time for metal detection. Hey, GM, I have a question. That You can just call me Alex, but okay. <laughs> um, <laughs> nope. We've known each other for like 20 Teacher? years, but go on. Teacher? Teacher? Uh, oh God, Proctor? has it been that long? Proctor? Jesus Christ, you're right. <laughs> if- I was 10 when... Anyway, go on. Yep. If I turn off my uh, my shield, do I lose the energy that I have left the, over? Uh, yes. Yeah, the shield will just run out of juice. Um, you know, in a few more minutes. Um, it it it. Or does it not? It does not say that it it just right, stops. Then, then yeah, your shield's just on. You're just kind of stuck with this. Um, cool. It's not the worst thing. Um, yeah, I'll just plop my ass in the. And near just the middle of the put uh, down in the middle of the crater. Yep. Yeah. Le- lean my chair back, pull out the steam deck, and uh, just Let other just game. Do the now, now I'm uh, now I'm playing StarCraft Two. Dumb question. All right. <laughs> of course you are. Yes. That makes more sure. sense though. Dumb. So to pin, use the grappling harpoon and pin. It says two EP next to it. Should I have been paying attention to that? Yes. You should. You should spend four energy points now. Ah, how does one get energy points back? Uh, I think you just get them like when you rest and whatever. Ah, so I... Yeah, it's it's like spell slots or stamina or whatever. So, uh, now that we're here, uh, we can do some scrapping. Let's start with the easy, obvious stuff, the tank and the two trucks. As enemy units, they have a standard scrap value. I'm just scrolling down to it. Almost there, okay. Um, so the two trucks, uh, they are, they were armored box wheels. That's the name of that enemy type. And they each have three pieces of tier two scrap. Oh, wow. 
So that's Ooh, six nice. pieces of tier two scrap. Um, remember, each piece of scrap takes up a single entire inventory slot. Yeah. Yep. Um, so you may want to divide that up. That's six pieces of tier two. I can carry that... six more because I have 12 capacity. Okay. Yeah, you can distribute this for building stuff later as you like, but let's just get it out of the crater. So yes, John, take all six pieces. Uh, put, put a T2 in six of your slots. And then the tank is worth four pieces of tier three scrap. Oh. So whoever would uh, like to carry that around. I, I have a question. Again. Mm -hmm. So I had leftover scrap from when we created our characters. Yes. Um, would I have left that on the ship? If you would like to leave that in the uh, hangar, um, you can. You can or the, the storage bay. You can do that. We have we have it on our shared, shared Google Doc. You can just transfer that. We can say you did that. Cool. I'm gonna do that. So I have an entirely empty storage bay. Sure. And then, do you want to um, carry around the the tank scrap? Yeah, I'll take the tank scrap. Sure. It's four T threes. Four T threes. And then move whatever leftovers you had onto the uh, the Google Doc. It's all the way at the bottom of the page. Um, so that's that's the obvious immediate scrap. So then the um, the area salvaging, which would be this crater and the satellite debris within it, areas have a certain level of supply, meaning you can roll to salvage them x times. Excuse me, uh, related to their supply, and this being a small crater with a small satellite in it, its supply is one. So I would like one person to roll a d20 to salvage the area. This is on the cheat sheet in the a bit off to the right salvaging in big caps letters. Who would like to salvage? Uh, can I? Because I'm the salvager. Sure. Oh yeah. That go ahead. seems logical. That seems like a John thing. Well, that's not a seven. Okay. Uh, not bad. You find two scrap of the tech level of the area. This is a satellite, John. This is advanced technology. You got two pieces of tech six scrap. Okay. Well, uh, oh, someone, shit. someone, heave those on. Heave, heave ho, heave away. Uh, and then I also would like to use my metal detector's passive to roll again. Yes. Uh, uh really. Uh, well, that doesn't generate additional scrap. No, it? no, it does. Whenever I enter oh. an area, I can roll, and on a 20, I would get a piece of scrap of that area. You, you it's said not it very was well. tier 6 scrap? Yeah. Yes, two, two T6s. You want to write right. that down, Colin? Uh, no. Yeah, uh, no, I'll, I I'll just take all of our scrap <laughs> uh, for So, now, John, your, your metal detector, go ahead, roll D20. I did, it did not. It did not get a Not 20, no. okay. Um, but then, in addition to that, narratively, not as part of a roll, uh, the main body of the satellite, you guys notice, has a uh, screen on it, and it's cracked, and it's a bit hard to read. Um, but I will send to you guys what that screen looks like in just a moment. Crash site. Whoa. Warning ice. Starfall. <gasps> it's Starfall's real. a thing? It's really real. Record. Record. Uh, for audio listeners, uh, it is a very simple map with a plotted out route of travel going from where they are very far south and it starts at a location called crash, crash site. There's a halfway part where it says warning ice because they're going toward the south pole and then at the end point it says the word starfall which is the name of this mythical city. So wait, is starfall let... just the arctic research station? Are we led to believe <laughs> that McMurdo? Antarctica has moved <laughs> upwards? You know the lore is a little unclear about the landmass significances, so let's not think about it too hard. <laughs> uh, I'm thinking about it. Does the ocean still exist? Don't hurt yourself. The I ocean still exists. I'm assuming the that's ocean the blue is the dark is blue on the map. Well, I mean, that could just be like very irradiated, can't go there. Like, it's both. So there's that. You have this now. Where we can prove to Manny that it's real. Well, we can at least maybe make a case for going towards it, because there's a map. A map does not prove that it still exists. I'm the map, I'm the map. But I don't need much more convincing than this, so... <laughs> well, yeah, I'm convinced. Yeah, so, a uh, bit of a lore note. Um, the way uh, crawlers, or at least your crawler, many crawlers work, is on just a simple democracy. If you're a citizen, you have one vote. So, the protocol would be to take this back to the captain, um and have them share the information and people would vote if it's 
the direction they want to travel in. Then we shall bring it back to the nest with us. Uh, yeah, so we can say that the, the uh, computer module that this is is one unit, one item. So if someone wants to put that in their inventory, then I'll jump up at once. I'm, I'm out of space. What do you want from me? I yeah, I don't have room. I'll do it. What do I write? Starfall uh, computer Call it like module? satellite computer module or something. You know? In cargo? Satcom. Call it satcom. Yeah, in your cargo. John, what did you say? Okay, so I said call it satcom, just to abbreviate. Satellite call it whatever he wants to call it. He can call it Steve if he feels like it. I don't care. No, Steve is our no, Steve, Steve, is a, Steve works our forge. He's our craft. <laughs> he's in our crafting bag. I can't tell if you're telling a joke or not. Be, oh yeah, we did. You did just name a guy Steve. <laughs> what do you mean? I'm not. Ju- How can you forget Steve? The disrespect. God. <laughs> we love. Forgive me. Steve. The disrespect on Steve's name from our from our what's his name. <laughs> uh huh. Um. So you guys uh pack up. Start heading back. It takes you another, you know, 30 or so minutes to walk back. Anybody want these charred corpses? I'm no? good. Okay. I don't think so. Unless it's a dude situation where you, like, drain the water out of people. I don't think it's um, that bad. Wait, uh, ex- hold you on. Get, like, Rewind. Motion, it's like a Tatooine situation. Rewind. What? Rip Go the watch the fucking movie. People. Watch Go the watch fucking the movie, movie, Gerard. <laughs> it's a sensation. Yeah. So do they just <laughs> put... It's genre-defining. Do they anyway. put you in, like, a towel reamer and just twist you dry? No, like, they put you in a dehydrator. <laughs> <laughs> and they suck the moisture out. They maybe suck you dry. Someone, the maybe suck you maybe dry. someone is literally <laughs> sucking on a hose like a gas siphon just to get the water out of <laughs> out of that guy. But we, I don't know. I'm not going to tell you that. Anyway, you walk your silly little robots back to your really big robot. To our silly and big robot. And... How dare you climb call Climb back my into the hangar... Silly. Uh climb out of the suits and you rush up yeah. to show some respect for him the, the, the command bay because you know kind of a big deal that thing this thing that you found and uh, what do you say to the Commodore captain, oh, captain my captain we found the map to start <laughs> <laughs> you just plonk it down on the table and they're like uh, we found it we found look, it the look. city of Atlantis <laughs> No, we know where Atlantis is. That's not. We're not looking for Atlantis. We're looking for the El Dorado. The city of El Dorado, the city of gold. That's the. Is that Shangri La? I can't remember. No, El Dorado. No, El Dorado. Was yeah, you're right. Then what's Shangri La? What am I? That's got like the fountain of youth up. in it, right? No, that's Florida. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. I'm, that's, I'm not even telling a joke, but <laughs> it's <laughs> somewhere in the Anywho, Gulf Coast. Uh, the Commodore says. Uh, Pardon? Run that by me again? Scrap the fell from the sky. It's found got the a funny map, map from the satellite. Atlantis. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> what One person speak? talk. <laughs> uh, so the, the some some technicians come over and uh, plug in, uh, you know, like whatever the future equivalent of a USB is into this thing. It's a USB. Um, USB four. It's still it, it's it, USB D. Um, it's a BS nuts. <laughs> And they download the data off of it and put it up on their nice, not cracked display screen in the control room. And you get a better look at it. And everybody just kind of uh, silently contemplates it for a moment. Um, Does anyone break the silence or do we wait for the NPCs to talk? Um, Uh, The sound of me playing video games in the background breaks the silence. He's playing Space Invaders. (laughs) That man playing Galaga. Thought we would have noticed. But we did. But we did. 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 I mean, I vote for at least getting closer and looking. Uh, the Commodore's like, yes, yes, a vote. That would be, that would be what we should do. Um, give me a moment. I will, uh, I will type up the brief. Um, and we'll be, uh, we'll be voting on it within, within the hour. Um, how was your, your trip out there? Did you run into any trouble? Uh, nothing we couldn't uh, handle, sir. We killed some bad guys. It was pretty epic. Great. <laughs> Mac <laughs> shot a through a t- Mac Mac shot through a tank gun. Mac killed a guy. <laughs> <laughs> Mac killed a tank. Several. Should lay low a little. Uh-oh. Rick killed a guy. Yeah, that's what I was going for. You should lay um, low a little bit. Like. <laughs> so yes, yeah, so you guys can go back down to um, your uh, your your hangar bay or wherever you feel like resting. Um, uh, I know Max Mech took a little bit of damage. We'll go over that in a little bit. Um, but uh, as you begin the downtime process. 
uh, a notification comes up on all of your comms devices and on like the uh, consoles and in the walls of the thing, and it says uh, "new vote available," and it has just sort of a, a brief description of everything that you just said about this map and. Um, basically the options of the vote are should we or should we not follow the map? Of course everyone in the crawler gets a vote but hey, you guys are five people and we believe in democracy here on this podcast so how do you guys vote? No! Follow the map! And no. the campaign! To treasure and the campaign here! Only if we can visit Atlantis first. We're Fine, yes and I guess Ready I'll go. say... Anyway, um, so you guys all put in your votes um, and uh it's unanimous. An uh, hour, we're not going. two, or three later. <laughs> um, what? I said it's unanimous. It's unanimous. Everyone else voted no. <laughs> Everyone else voted no. God, could you imagine? Uh, show's over. Goodbye. Um, no. Uh, you. A few moments later, or not even a few moments, a few hours later, you got to give people who are taking a nap a chance to vote. Um, the votes come back, and it's tight. It's tighter than you thought it might have been. It's 54% yes. Um, and the rest. Most of the rest to know, and a few unsure. So, it's official. Um, the Commodore comes back on over the radio, or over the, uh, you know, the PA, and is like, Well, the vote's decided, everyone. Uh, we will be following the course of the map. Uh, we'll begin moving out tomorrow. We'll spend the remainder of today turning around. Uh, so, <laughs> did you do anything that you need to do to... Uh, prepare for the journey, uh, head down to the trading bay, uh, we'll be needing some extra supplies and that sort of thing, but um, it's decided we'll follow, be following the map to wherever it may truly lead. Um, place that we gotta get. And if it ends horribly, blame our, blame our pilots. <laughs> Throw them overboard. Uh, it won't be an easy journey, we'll be heading out of our usual territory, into the cold, down south. Into the unknown. We'll need to make a trip uh, about chocolate. We've been through a lot together on this thing, and I think we can handle this. Down the road. We're not just a squad, we're a family. <laughs> family. Um, so then we'll run through uh, sort of a downtime process. The downtime process goes over... Uh, the game says it takes a week. We'll, we'll, we'll play a little loosey-goosey with that. Sometimes it'll be four days, sometimes it'll be like seven or eight days, whatever. Right? Um, and a few things can happen during that time. Um, so repairs is the first thing so anything that is of equal tech level or lower to the crawler is repaired for free um i think so that the the crawler is tech level two i'm pretty sure all the equipment you guys have is also tech level two so yes or one so it's all fully repaired mac your your sp went down a little bit you get your sp back on your mac it's repaired um Holy cool what about um, my ep your energy points goes back up over the course of the week. If you spent any action points on your pilot, those could go back up over the course of the week. Um, no one is wounded or anything, so we don't need to go through that part of the process. Um, if anyone wants to do anything with the storage bay, take some excess scrap out of your inventory, put it into the storage bay. I'll give you guys a moment to do that on the Google Doc. I know, John, your inventory is pretty full, uh, yeah, so... I still got plenty of space. Uh, I'm going to deposit these six extra scrap for everyone into there all the way at the bottom of the google doc so there it is I oh yeah i guess i should put 12. put our our new yep. new scrap in there as uh, well yeah I'll, i would i would just put all your new scrap in there and then in between sessions i'll let you guys like build stuff with it if you want you know because oh, it's it's a long process deal. so like our personal leftover scrap should we keep that separate or could we just that is up to you if you want to hoard it i can't make you take it out of your inventory but if you want you want to put it in in the bay, that's fine. So I forgot to take all of it out last time, and I meant to, so I'll put three of my personal scrap into the general fund. It doesn't have hurt to have some on your person. Sometimes you need it for, like, we don't know if field we're repairs and stuff. Like a but... trader or someone who might want some for something nice. So yeah, it's I'll good keep... to carry a little bit around. Keep um, a little cash on you, because, you know, you can flash yeah. it, and someone might give you a deal. Yeah, you want to be liquid, you know. Um, so that's all good. Armor bay, uh, crafting, crafting we will do off, off camera, because there's just a lot of options and then we're going to be here a lot all day. of minutia. um trading bay during the course of the week the trader on your finds something that they think you might like to buy give me a moment to just double check the rules for that Did we name our trader guy yes rocks oh sorry rude what 
Why is it not yes, the, Joe? You, you named the traitor Rux, R U X. Yes. That's what you named That's them. not a reference. Um, and you guys are a trade caravan crawler specifically, so uh, he's a very good trader. His, his will is um, not his own. So I will roll a d20 to see what they scrounge up for you. A 19. Um, an intact mech chassis and an intact system are available for trade. Oh. Shit. Um, give me a moment. And it's tech 3. Um, it's one tech You do have to buy it's, them. It's the iron worm. <laughs> yeah, it's... Oh my well. god. Um, okay, so worth considering that in order to purchase these things, you need to spend an amount of scrap equal to that item's salvage value of the correct tech level. So, oh, um, okay. it'll be pretty expensive, but you do have those tech six scraps that you found earlier, so you may be able to do that. Oh, that's true. Know. You could break one six um, down and end up with a lot of other stuff. Um, let me determine randomly which tech three chassis you've got here. So one, two, it is a brawler. A brawler chassis is available, and it is has a salvage value of five. So you need five tech three scrap to four. purchase the brawler. I mean... <laughs> if someone wants to go for it, you can. Um, and you can also then trade in your current chassis, and you keep all the parts attached to it. We, again, we can decide this in between if you want. Um, yeah, we can just do, sure. like, decide all this stuff and then do like a recap. I just want to announce what you have here, and we can reveal uh, it. I have a question, DM. Yeah. Do we have to trade in our current mechs, or can we keep them as spares? You can keep them as backup. So, you've got the brawler, and then... What was it? Also a system? A long-barreled green laser. Ooh! Can I have a laser? A I don't have any, like, weapon weapons. Uh, so, yeah, again, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to actually purchasing them, but those are what's available for trade. Okay. Um, we can do that off-camera. And then let me double check anything else that needs to happen in the downtime process. In, in your shoes, I think I would buy the gun before I'd buy the whole new map. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Just yeah. Be, um, easier to repair, too. Ah, uh, then uh, there's also an upkeep cost. So in order to keep the thing running, everybody has to contribute some scrap or something. So you guys need to contribute five tech two scrap, not each between you, um, to keep the, the crawler running. Essentially taxes. Oh Jesus! Well, but you've I got you've got it in your in your bay that. there. Yeah, we've got, got 15, fifteen of them. We're down to ten. So okay. you contribute your scrap to the community to to keep the the city running. We gotta um, pay the, the we got taxes. Uh, um, and then the other thing we need to actually think about is uh, what happens at the pilot bay. You go down to train during your time. Um, basically, you get one training point on a normal downtime, and so. Um, you can all pick one new talent, one new pilot talent, one of your class abilities. Which again, we can also sort out in between. Yeah, cool. uh, I'm gonna I'm wait till the in between. And then in the armory, likewise, you can all select one new piece of pilot equipment of the tech level of the crawler. So you just get an item out of the armory. Um, we'll do all that in between just because there's a lot of options. And that is about it. Like salvage, trade, cool. craft, customized train. Uh, yeah. So that is uh, where we will uh, start wrapping things up for this session. Um, you guys found the mysterious map leading you to the mysterious place uh, that may or may not be Eldorado. Nice. And picked up some very fancy pieces of garbage. So, uh, everybody, trash. thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. Like, comment, and subscribe. Please stick around to see where this goes. Um, it's going to be fun. Uh, like I said, check out our previous seasons. Uh, if you want to really support us, become a YouTube member. Check out our other content, our live streams and the like. Check out the game I'm working on. Links for all that stuff in the description. And uh, this show is every two weeks on Friday mornings, uh, 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Uh, but whenever you find the time to watch it, we do appreciate you. Same bat place, same bat channel. Okay, bye. Bye. <laughs> bye. <laughs> goodbye, goodnight, goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.